to section 9.22 systems of equations in three or more variables. This is day number two and we're going to do some word problems. So uh, for example in a triangle, triangles are really great for uh, systems of three variables because you've got three angles and three unknowns and, uh, and then three equations. So anyway, in a triangle the largest angle is 70 degrees greater than the smallest angle. The largest angle is twice as large as the remaining angle. Find the measure of each angle. So I drew a, a sketch out a, a little picture here, and then my unknowns are going to be the smallest, the remaining, and the large, largest angles. And here they are: largest, smallest, remaining. So then the knowns are going to be the largest is is the smallest plus seventy. That's here. You can see the from the first sentence. Then the largest angle is also twice the remaining angle. Find the measure of each. Also know that. Um, add them all up and they get to 180. So we're going to do some substitution here. It looks like we've got two different equations that have L equals something, L equals something. So I think I can rewrite the third equation uh, so that so that we have everything in terms of L. So if I, if I solve for S here and I solve for R here, then I can use them to substitute here. I'll rewrite this third equation no longer with uh, S's and R's, but all in terms of L's. L minus 70. L divided by 2 plus L is equal to 180. So uh, you notice that I didn't need to use the parentheses here algebraically, but I just think it's a good idea to use it whenever you can, whenever you're doing substitution, so that you, you can proofread your work more easily. I'm going to add 70 to both sides and then combine the like terms. You get 2.5 L is equal to 250. Divide both sides, you get L is equal to 100. Back substitute. If L is 100, then you know what S is from this equation. You know what R is from this equation. And you can, um, and you can present your answer. 30, 50, and 100. In a suitcase factory, there are three machines, A, B, and C. When all three are running correctly, they will produce 222 suitcases per day. If A and B work, but C does not, then you might be wondering what the audio check for today is. Uh, and I'll tell you that in 1983, the Academy Award winner for Best Picture was the movie Gandhi. Epic, epic film about a single man um, against the British Empire. Uh, when we say British Empire, we mean guns and ships and money and wealth and power. One man uh, with a, with his walking stick and nothing else, uh, no, nothing more than his words, uh, gained independence from... You, you think about how we gained independence from the British, uh, from the Americans, you know, generals and uh, George Washington, battles were fought, guns were bought... Um, they had none of that. They were incredibly poor, and yet they were still able to gain their own independence. Fascinating movie. Highly recommend it. Gandhi. Check it out. That's how movies should be made. All right. So if A and B work, but C does not. So basically, I'm going to take all these three, A, B, and C. Those are my unknowns. It's, it's, you might think it'd be unnecessary to write this out, but I really do think it is and very helpful. <clears throat> this is how many suitcases that they each produce in a day. <clears throat> and so if you have just A and B with nothing from C, you get 159. If you have only B and C, then you get 150, 147. And if you have all three of them together, then they are producing 220. I originally put this one on the top, like I originally wrote this as the first equation, but then I realized uh, that if I put this one here, A plus B equals zero, then I would already have a zero right here, which was, you know, it's a step that later on, if you, like, if you don't do that, if you put A, B, and C equals 222 on, on the top, then you'll have to make a zero be in this spot as one of your steps later on. But it's just a lot easier to do this here and now so you don't do it later. Plus, when you do this next step of eliminating this A right here, when you multiply by negative 1, um, it's a little easier to do. You don't have to, like, 0 times negative 1 is still C. Anyway, <clears throat> let's zoom in on this and check it out. I'm trying to create a zero here. Uh, that's what the roadmap says. So take this entire top equation, multiply it by negative one. A times negative one is negative A plus A is zero. B times negative one plus B is also zero. Zero times negative one is zero plus C is C. 
159 times negative 1 is plus 222 is 63. And I'm going to rewrite both equation number 1 and 2 again here, just so that, uh, just so that I have something to work with as I keep on going. Next, uh, roadmap. We're actually, with only one operation, uh, we are 1, 2, 3, 0, 4 zeros into it. That's really good. We have A, B, and C here. And so then the roadmap says, next, we're going to get rid of this C. We're going to do that by taking the bottom equation, multiplying it by negative 1, and adding it to the middle equation. So C times negative 1 is negative C plus C is 0. 63 times negative 1 plus 147 is 84. And so then we're doing really well. We've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The only thing left the roadmap needs to get rid of is the 0 here. So we're going to take this entire middle equation, multiply it by negative 1 to get uh, the 0 that we need on this, this top row. b times negative 1 is negative b plus b is 0. 84 times negative 1 is negative 84 plus 159 is 75. And so then we have all these zeros and just a, b, and c left. So seven, a is equal to 75, b is equal to 84, c is equal to 63. And you can see there it is. Boom. All right, another scenario that fits really well with three systems and three unknowns is parabolas. Uh, if you give Desmos uh, three points, it'll be able to plot for you the exact parabola that it goes through. Uh, a parabola, very much like a straight line, is defined by two points. You know, once you have two points, there's exactly one line, and it's defined by those two points. Uh, you can find out what it is. You can find its slope and y-intercept. Same thing with parabola. If you give it three points then there's exactly one parabola that will fit through it. So find a quadratic function that fits these data points. Input 1, output negative 4. Input negative 1, output negative 6. Input 2, output negative 9. You can rewrite it kind of like this with the inputs and the outputs. And this function, uh, it's a quadratic function. So therefore, we can have a, b, and c. And technically, you could have done it in hk form, like a times parentheses x minus h parentheses squared plus k. I mean, that would have been another three variables, but I think this is a lot easier because it's going to result in just linear um, linear problem solving. So anyway, let's take the first, the first number. The first input is 1. And if that's true, if we put 1 in for x, then it'll be 1x squared times a plus 1 times b plus c is e will equal to negative 4. Somehow, if we choose the right values of a, b, and c, somehow when you plug in 1, you'll get out negative 4. Similarly, if you plug in negative 1 here in for x, you should get out negative 6. Negative 1 squared times a plus negative 1 times b plus c is equal to negative 6. Similarly, if you plug in 2, you get 2 squared and then plug in 2 here, it'll, it'll get out negative 9. If you simplify this, you basically get 1 uh, positive 1, 4, 1, negative 1, 2, as you can see right here. So now, after plugging in all three inputs and outputs, we've got three equations and three unknowns, a, b, and c. And so, uh, roadmap says that we have to put zeros right here. I see this a, that means I have to multiply the entire top equation by negative 1, and so a times negative 1 plus a is 0. Good. b times negative 1 plus negative b is negative 2b. c times negative 1 plus c is 0. Ooh, good. We get a 0 here. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, plus negative 6 is negative 2. Roadmap says we need a 0 right here. So I see the 4. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 4 to get elimination. a times negative 4 plus is, is negative 4a plus positive 4a gives you 0. b times negative 4 is negative 4b plus 2b is negative 2b. c times negative 4 is negative 4c plus positive c is negative 3c. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16 plus negative 9 is 7. Good, so we've got 0, 0 here, 0 here. And roadmap says next we have to divide this middle equation by whatever we see here so that we get b all by itself. That means I take the middle equation divided by negative 2. And we get this, recopying the whole thing. 
top equation remains unchanged. The middle equation now has b right here. And, and so then, therefore, the roadmap says, next we go for a 0 here and a 0 below. So that, and we're going to use b to do it. I see the positive b. I multiply the entire middle equation by negative 1. So we get 0 times negative 1 is 0, plus a is still a. b times negative 1 is negative b, plus positive b is the 0 that we're hoping for. 0 times negative 1 is 0 plus c, so it's still c. Uh, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, plus negative 4 is negative 5. Let's do the same thing to get rid of this term here. You can see it's going to be 0. I see the I see the negative 2, so I have to multiply the middle equation by positive 2 and add it to this. 0 times positive 2 is 0 plus 0 is still 0. b times 2 is b times 2 is 2b plus negative 2b is 0, which is what we were hoping for to eliminate th that term. 0 times 2 is 0 plus negative 3c is still negative 3c. 0 times 2 is 2 plus 7 is 9. Good. So now we, and then of course we've got these three equations. And next, what we do, roadmap says, is we clear this negative 3 divide, by dividing the entire equation by a negative 3. Recopying the upper two equations, they remain unchanged. The bottom equation is c equals negative 3. Uh, roadmap says we get rid of this c next c times negative 3, uh, sorry, negative 3 times, right, times negative 1 gives you positive 3, and then that's negative 2 at the top. So tell me, now that we have all this finished, you tell me what goes right here. So that we have a value of a, b, and c, you can actually say right here, uh, f of x is equal to whatever the value of a is, to you tell me, and then b is equal to 1, so that's just going to be 1 here, and c is going to be equal to negative 3. So there it is. Uh, let's do one more real life. And so basically, uh, you can say anything that follows quadratic conditions really only needs three data points. This is bad statistics, but technically, you need only three data points, and if you know it's strictly quadratic, then you can find the parabola. Just like we did tossing the, the golf ball into the air. Uh, it, came, it, it came out as a parabola, and if you had only three data points, you'd be able to find the parabola, the exact parabola that those three data points went through. Um, under certain conditions, it is thought that the cost of operating an automobile as a function of speed is approximated by a quadratic function. So the cost, so speed is going to be the input and cost is going to be the output. Use the data shown below to find an equation of a function. Then use the equation to determine the cost of operating the automobile at 60 miles per hour and 80 miles per hour. All right, so you're basically going to do the same thing. F of 10 is equal to tw 22. F of 20 miles per hour is going to equal 20 cents per mile. Input is 50 miles per hour, output is 20 cents per mile. So you can do this whole thing again, and I'm not going to do that on the video, but you get the idea. And eventually, you get out these numbers for A, B, and C. Now, if, they, if you know what the function is, then you can use it to predict or determine the cost of operating for the next two data points, 60, 60 miles per hour and 80 miles per hour. Plug in 60 as an input and into here, and you'll get an output of 22 cents per mile. Plug in 80 miles per hour, you'll get an output of 29 cents per mile. Um, and that's it. I'd like you to uh, start 9v2 by copying the problem list and do the first problem, and I will see you in class.